Portland, where there's been a lot of violence and problems in Seattle. And as we were saying at the outset of the broadcast, in New York, where police were under fire and they were the ones being targeted for attacks. Laura Engel was interrupted by the President of the United States a little bit earlier, but I wanted to follow up on that report because it's still an ongoing issue in New York, isn't it, Laura? It's a huge issue every single night in New York. Over the last several weeks, there have been violence and shootings. And then we had the protests that happened on the Brooklyn Bridge yesterday, where we had dual protesters going on. And then this horrific incident where protesters and police clashed. And I was sharing with you earlier that a woman has been taken into custody who was believed to be the cane wielding suspect who reached over the fence and was hitting those officers over the head. You've been seeing the video all day long. It is really terrible, and they've been looking for that suspect. They've got this woman in custody and now going under a psychiatric evaluation. We also want to share with you some of the newer video that we got from NYPD today. Um, the, the horrifying video back on the bridge really does show you just how bad things got, which led to broken bones and staples to the head for some officers. Among those injured, the chief of department, Terrace Monahan, the NYPD's highest ranking uniformed officer, who I know you're talking to soon, he suffered injuries to his hands. Uh, the NYPD releasing this new footage showing what things look like as protesters clashed with police officers on bike patrol on the Brooklyn Bridge as well. This all went down just a few feet away from an anti-violence march led by local clergy who were calling for peace in the city. Now, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio signed police reform measures yesterday, including a ban on chokeholds and other restraints while condemning the violence against police. Listen. There's no situation in which it's acceptable to attack a police officer, period. I talked to Terry Monahan after I heard that he was there. Thank God he's okay. Um, no, it's just not acceptable. Some protesters say that the police didn't actually let them exercise their right to protest. At least 36 people were arrested during the protest, and at least one person has been charged with assault. Violence, as I mentioned at the top, continues to escalate in the city. According to local reports, at least eight people were wounded in separate shootings last night. So far this week, there have been 42 shootings, 59 injured. Neil. Just incredible. Laura Engel, thank you very, very much. You heard that bite there from the mayor talking about Terry Monahan. Uh, Terry Monahan's chief, Terrence Monahan, is the NYPD chief of the department. Uh, and this is his first chat, first TV chat, since all of these attacks. Um, chief, it's very good to have you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine, Neil. I got a few bruises here and there. Luckily, uh, the fingers weren't broken, just jammed a bit. Uh, so I'm doing okay. I'm doing a, a lot better than uh, my sergeant and uh, the lieutenant that was attacked. Yeah, I was going to answer about that. But, boy, you look pretty banged up yourself there. Um, and, and you were the irony was you this was an event that was supposed to be supportive of the police department, that you're trying to get the public protected and, 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 and looked after. And then it just all of a sudden devolved into this. Um, what happened? Oh, listen, it, it, the peaceful protest, the clergy that was coming across, there was a group of anarchists that wanted to prevent them from uh, from having their march. So a group had jumped on the Brooklyn Bridge roadway to block them in the Brooklyn side. So arrests were being made over there. I was walking across the roadway trying to get to where that was happening with a couple of my personnel when a, a group jumped onto the walkway. And one individual jumped onto the road bed where we were and came running directly up to us and immediately started cursing us out, pushing. Uh, we ordered him off the road bed. He wasn't leaving. So we went to make an arrest. As we were arresting him, he grabs onto a railing by the walkway and a struggle begins. The fighting starts. That's when the individual comes up with a cane and hits my lieutenant in the head, cuts him open. It's my sergeant in the head, causing him to get eight staples in his head. We were able to remove that individual away from the walkway. As I went back to identify the person who hit him with the cane, our bike patrol was coming. The person who hit him with the cane was able to jump over into opposing traffic and get away. But another individual took a mop handle and charged our guys on the bike, knocking them down. He ends up on top of one of our lieutenants from the bike unit, 
and literally went to town on him, started beating the heck out of him with rights and lefts, full swings to the face. It was at that point myself and my lieutenant, who was already bleeding from his head, reached over to pull him off that lieutenant. A struggles continues with the other cops on the bridge. Punches getting thrown. He breaks free from them. He gets into a boxing stance to keep going. That's when I reach over. I grab him. I was able to pull him back towards the fence. He turns on me, throws a couple of punches in my direction. The rest of the cops then were able to grab him, cuff him, and he was arrested for the assault on the officer. The lieutenant, the bike lieutenant, ended up breaking an orbital bone. You know, Chief, this was only a few days after a, 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 some guy out of nowhere uh, gets into a fight with an officer, puts him in a headlock, uh, a, a, a chokehold, really, that if it were reversed, that officer would have been fired and probably sitting in a jail cell. What's going on in New York? There is a lot of animosity towards the police. And we're feeling it not just in the protests when these anarchists take over it, but on the streets, on the street corners. There is a feeling that uh, they don't have to listen to the police and that they're willing to fight the police officers. So it's something that our men and women have to deal with every single day. They're going out to a call, uh, to, to whatever the call for service may be. So it's a danger that they're, they're dealing with. We have them going out. We try to get them to go out back one another up. You know, we do have numbers in the police department, and it's something that we are going to have to get control of. But right now, uh, protesters are demanding more monies be taken away uh, from the police department, Chief. And already, uh, Mayor de Blasio is looking to trim at least a billion dollars from a budget, I believe, a tad north of six billion. Um, but he has not exactly been after mentioning, of course, that he, he called you and saw what you were doing, but he's, uh, many of your fellow officers are saying he doesn't have our back. Do you think Mayor Bill de Blasio has your back? Listen, I've worked with the mayor for years. He, he has been a supporter. He has helped us uh, at times. There are always issues, you know, going back to the beginning with, uh, with the mayor, but he, he's been a supporter to us. When we've asked the things to get done, He's given it to us. These are tough times that we are going through right now. Uh, it's a lot more than the mayor. The city council is strongly, strongly opposed to us. They seem to be the biggest voice right now in defunding and, and taking away from us. They are the biggest ones right now telling us how they don't want quality of life enforced in certain neighbors, neighborhoods. I've gotten that directly from some city council members. So that's, uh, that's one of the issues that we're dealing with. We need our electeds throughout the entire city to stand up and say that they support our police. But we're not seeing that, Chief, and I'm not trying to put you in a corner here, but uh, hundreds of your uh, men and women uh, who are nearing retirement age, um, they don't have to retire, but they are. They want to uh, because they're sick of it. I had an officer here not too long ago who's saying, I don't want my kid to become a cop. I, I, I just don't think it's worth it. Um, and crime goes up du a double, triple digits, homicide, uh, better than 116 percent throughout all of this. Uh, how do you get a handle on that? Listen, it's building up the morale of our cops. Understand it right now, the morale has probably been as low as it's been in a long time. It is important that we as an agency tell them how much we appreciate them how much we know they're out there, the trouble that they're dealing with on the street. But more importantly, the silent majority that's out there, the community that is out there that supports our police officers, that know the job they do. They know the times they ran into a burning building to save a life. They know the times that they saved the life of a choking baby, of a cardiac victim, how often they've run into gunfire to save people. These are the men and women that you're hearing others uh, put down on a regular basis. These are the heroes of 9-11. These are the men and women who have made New York the safest big city. Only months ago, we had that mantra without a problem. We made reforms in this agency after 2014, and we accomplished, the men and women accomplished things that no one thought was possible. Less arrests, less summonses, 
less stops, crime went down, and more importantly, violent crime had gone down to historic lows. These are the men and women that are going to be out there and are going to turn the city around, and they're going to turn it around with the people, the good people of New York that know and appreciate them. You know, Chief, um, you don't talk about this. You were banged up pretty badly yourself. Uh, I, I've talked to Democrats and Republicans who've worked in various uh, administrations who sing your praises. But in your maybe most quiet moments, have you ever thought yourself, the hell with this? I don't need this. Listen, I love this job. I've been doing it for 39 years. I got banged up as a rookie back in the 80s. I got banged up in the 90s. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm getting a little bit old for it, so my body doesn't recover quite as quickly. <laughs> but I love this I love this city. I love the people of the city. And more importantly, I love the men and women who do this job. It's amazing. You know, I've been through coming close to my fifth start in my fifth generation uh, of fifth decade of policing. Wow. And to see the young officers out there, they're the ones that are going to be leading okay. this agency. We're 175 years in existence. What's happening now? Keep at it, Chief. One day, Keep at it, Chief. You're a good man a great man and a and strong man. Chief Monahan. More to this.